Hi everybody, this is my next Blender tutorial and this one we're going to talk about color correction. Now there's, there's actually two types of color correction that people do. There's color correction and then there's color grading. Color correction is basically taking the input footage and or the raw footage from the cameras and balancing it all to some middle ground or, or to some uh, some unified ground so that when you apply grading styles, which is the, where you get all the emotional feel, uh, all the, the clips will uh, match up properly. So the first level is to, tr is, is to get a good sort of neutral look from your, from your camera. Now, you can shoot um, any number of different ways and any number of different settings from, from your, your camera. Uh, I'm, this, the, the footage that I'm about to show you is from the Canon 5D, and I shot some with uh, what the Canon refers to as standard settings. So this is their absolute default, uh, and it's supposed to look nice right out of the camera. And then there's also the Technicolor CineStyle, and the CineStyle compresses the the dynamic range within the sort of the middle 50 to 60 percent of the, uh, or some. It's hard to say exactly, but the middle. So you don't you don't see very dark darks or very bright whites you see in the in the middle middle range and apparently one of the reasons for doing this is because the h264 uh, color codec or compress video compression codec does a lot of squashing or a lot of crushing at uh, the top and bottom so you lose detail at the top and bottom you, and it tries to keep it in the mid range this way if you compress your your dynamic range to the middle of the range you're theoretically getting around the h264 compression artifacting of course, when you finish grading your image and you, uh, you output to H.264, you're going to be having to use the whole range anyway, and you're going to face that. You're going to face whatever artifacting it provides, but uh, well, there's no way around that. So let's start by adding, adding a couple of movies. The first movie This one here, this is using the Cine style. Once we create a viewer node, we can go down here and select viewer node here, press T, bring up the toolbar, and then also do that. We can stretch this and stretch this and get these scopes looking nice and large. I'll explain the use of the scopes a little bit more. This is the only scope we need right, right at the very beginning here. Now, here's what we see with the cine style. This band here, this is the dark areas that are not being used. And then up here, this is the light band that we're not, or that's not being used. And, and when we add the, um, when we add, this is the, the Canon's normal look, or standard look rather. we can see it goes much darker and it still doesn't go up into light but there's not a lot of white in this image so it's not going to go too high anyway but we can see there's a fair amount of dark and it does cover more of the dark range than this one here and then when we zoom out see this is a, a nicer looking image to begin with than this one this is flat and blah but we're going to fix that so first thing to do is to add an RGB curved node We'll use this one down here as the control, so I won't touch that one yet. Don't need those fully opened. Okay. Now, first step. Add a, add a viewer node here. And then we can watch these as we adjust. So bring the black up. What we're going to do is, as we bring the black up, this edge is going to move towards the side here. Other changes will happen as well, but what we want to do is try and get it as close as possible to the, the side here without losing all, uh, all of our vertical. And you'll see what I mean as soon as we start dragging here. Just drag very slowly up. Give it a chance to re-render there. That's a starting point. And then now we 
bring the top down because we want to bring this up here. And we can bring the black up a little bit more. See, I'm not, that's one thing I'm not entirely sure about. I need to study is when this, when these go vertical like that or they lose vertical, I'm not sure what the implication of that is exactly. I know that ultimately you want as much possible here, or as much as possible here, that means you've got a lot of dynamic range, a lot of information. But I, I, I don't really know the exact uh, relationships. Now this already is looking a lot better than this. And the last thing we do here is we give a slight S curve to the gamma curve. What this does is it incre this increases the contrast between the bright and dark sections. You don't have to have much of an S curve. And you've now got a much, much nicer image, and it's actually a lot closer to what the uh, the Canon default is. The idea of the the capturing in the <coughs> the uh, the more flat, the cine style look is that in the shadowy areas, like under his arm here, you see a lot more detail. Whereas over here, that detail has been crushed a little bit. At least that's the theory. Now this this may not be the best image to actually show that. Now when you're you're playing with your your color curve here, your gamma curve, you can you can alter its shape. You can do things like move move the sort of S back which has a, an overall brightening effect to the image. Um, you can crush the, the darker down a little bit more, bring it up. So at this point, now you're getting into stylistic looks. You're getting into deciding what kind of an image you want to see. It's not, at this point, really capturing uh, what's really there as much as what you want to show is there. So that's, um, that's the first the first key thing is is get your black and white levels set by using the uh, the histogram here, and then using a, a slight S curve to increase the contrast. And now you end up with a workable image. Uh, also, if you want, you could add one other node, a saturation node. And you can increase the color saturation a little bit. Now it's important not to not to you know none of these things should be really really strong you know like if you if you if you did an extreme S curve here I mean if you want this look you can but now you're getting into very very artistic choices if you're just trying to use make workable video you want to try and keep your keep the changes that you're making relatively subtle So here the saturation mostly is, shows up on the sky and some of the leaves. Interestingly, a way to make um, what people commonly refer to as the, uh, the bleach bypass look is to use a, a saturation node like this, but to go the other direction. Instead of increasing saturation, drop it down to say about 0.6. And when you do that, you end up with this sort of bleached out look. This is what people refer to as the bleach bypass look. Again, this is not the most colorful image, not the maybe not the best example of that. Oh, also, what we can take a look at down here, this is the color space wheel. This is this is the uh, again the center look output. It's as you go towards the edges, you're increasing color saturation. So we can see that uh, we're still closely in, so there's not a lot of color saturation. In the default Canon view, this is the, the color saturation space. Once we've done our basic gamma curve and color and uh, brightness levels, see that we're, we're occupying a much better uh, color space here. In fact, even then, the default is back here. So we've actually made an improvement on the image. Um, I think that's all for this one. Thanks.